from the South Point studio. <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> so I look at the clock. I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year, dozens of golf outings, and the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. This weekend, the top California juveniles will be in action. It's the trials to the Grade 2 Robert A. Dare Kindergarten Futurity this Sunday night. Great racing action is in store with the juveniles with the 10 fastest times advancing to the kindergarten final on May 12th. Plus, night racing's best bets like our early and late pick fours and our $10,000 pick six promo. We'll add 10000 to the pick six pool on Sunday if there's not a carryover. Last Sunday's pick six paid over $34,000. And horse players, Los Alamitos is the perfect place to enjoy all of the national simulcast racing action. From Santa Anita and Oaklawn to Gulfstream Park and the top New York tracks. And remember to reserve a table in the beautiful Vessels Club for Kentucky Derby Day. For reservations, call 714-820-2681. We're all about the horse players. The kindergarten trials this Sunday night. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program for this almost Friday, Thursday, Race Day Las Vegas radio program. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at our studio station, the South Point Studio Station on the South Point Studios streaming network at YouTube from the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on Las Vegas Boulevard. 
big boulevard here in Las Vegas. That's for sure. We welcome you to the show. And we welcome everybody else out there that gets us through the many different platforms that we have. And you know what they are. Our radio station here in town, in case you're zipping around in your car early in the morning. Uh, that is, of course, our anchor station, Sports Talk, 1400 AM in Las Vegas. And, of course, 107.1 FM as well. And then, of course, all of our websites. we got racedaylasvegas.com, .vegas.world, .global. we got them all. They stream our show as well. And, of course, on your apps for your iPhones and your Androids. If you get the KSHP app on there, you can listen to us. If you get the YouTube app on there, you can go to YouTube and do the same thing you do with your computers, and that is go to YouTube, type in South Point Studios Network, South Point Studios there, and you'll get our network streaming, and you can see us and listen to us that way as well on your devices. And, of course, anywhere you get your podcasting, we're there as well. Simply put, however, wherever, wherever, whenever, Welcome to the Race Day Show for this almost Friday, Thursday. We are now 16 days away from the Run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby. And, of course, uh, before that, on Thursday, May 2nd, we'll have the special Oaks Derby uh, uh, race, uh, race Day Show right here, the special show covering Oaks Day Racing in the Oaks and a preview for the Kentucky Derby on Thursday, the 2nd of May at 3 o'clock right here where you're watching now on YouTube will only be on YouTube for this special show. We will not be on any of the other platforms streaming. Okay, remember that. Only on YouTube. It'll be 3 o'clock Pacific time on Thursday, May 2nd. And, of course, Friday, May 3rd, we'll have the uh, Kentucky Derby Seminar in the uh, the Grandview Lounge here in uh, the uh, South Point right next to the race book. It'll happen at 6 p.m. in the evening right after the race is concluded on the Kentucky Oaks Day card and uh, Southern California Racing. Jonathan Hardoon, John Lendo, and myself will be in that uh, seminar, and that'll happen in the Grandview Lounge at uh, 6 p.m. on Friday, the uh, 3rd of May. And then when all that work is done, we get upstairs on Kentucky Derby and party and play the races the way they do it here at the South Point in the big grand ballroom with the big TV sets, a lot of little sets for the other races going on as well, big banquet tables, food and drink discounts, and uh, plenty of betting windows and a hat contest in several different categories. So bring your best Kentucky Derby hat as well. It's all free, all of that free right here at the South Point. Come and join us. We'd love to have you and party in the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. Well, as far as the Kentucky Derby is concerned, not too much of uh, any breaking news happening so far, except for the fact that um, the horse common defense this one needs a defection or two. Now, Common Defense is sitting at 22. This is a, the, trained by Kenny McPeak, and uh, Christian Torres uh, was the rider there in his last start, so I would assume that he would get the mount if the horse gets in. He needs uh, two defections, and uh, for the most part, one is almost uh, certain, but he just needs one more defection to get within the um, Kentucky Derby field. That very well may happen. You know how it goes when it gets closer to the Kentucky Derby. We still have 16 days, over a little bit over two weeks to go until the Derby. But uh, word out of uh, Churchill Downs is uh, the Derby horses that are there are working fine and doing fine there, and the other ones are making arrangements to get to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, for the uh, Kentucky Derby, that's for sure. Uh, this weekend coming up on Saturday, big race, the $1,250,000 Oaklawn Handicap uh, for the older handicap horses, uh, we'll, uh, we'll run. And uh, we'll take a look at that field a little bit later on with uh, Jonathan Hardoon. And there are three races uh, coming up this weekend that have somewhat Preakness uh, race uh, uh, ramifications, really. The Federico Tessio, which is at Laurel Park, and of course, uh, you know, that's Maryland Racing. Of course, the uh, Preakness, the middle jewel of the Triple Crown, will be run at Pimlico Racecourse. By the time they get closer to the uh, Preakness, they'll be moving the races from Laurel uh, to Pimlico. But uh, Pimlico will host the Federico Te Tessio this weekend. And uh, Laurel has five races, the Fred Federico Tessio, one of them. And that is a Preakness win in your in race. You win that, you get into the Preakness. Now, there are two other races uh, this weekend where if the winner decides to go to the Preakness, that the, uh, the racetracks uh, that are hosting them will pay uh, the freight to do that, and that is the Illinois Derby and the Bathhouse Row Stakes at Oak Lawn Park. 
So Oaklawn has three big stakes races. Laurel has five of them that include the uh, Federico Tessio. Keeneland will have a couple of uh, stakes races, a grade two and a grade three. Santa Anita kicks in tomorrow with the Hollywood meet. And on uh, Saturday, uh, Santa Anita will have two grade three races. Aqueduct will kick in with a stakes race. And as far as the weekend complete on Sunday, Santa Anita will come back with a couple of more stakes races. And uh, Hawthorne, of course, will have the Illinois Derby. That'll happen on Sunday at Hawthorne. The other two races, the Bathhouse Row and the Federico Tessio, with uh, Preakness implications, will be run on Saturday. Uh, today is kind of a horse player holiday, really. Anytime there's a big carryover and a shot to get it, we call it a horse player holiday. Today uh, kind of classifies as that because Gulfstream Park has a carryover in their late pick five today, the late pick five, last five races at Gulfstream, the carryover, $121,000 plus. And remember, it's a 50-cent base bet. I'm going to kind of uh, kind of try to squeeze out a play or two from Jonathan Hardoon at uh, Gulfstream for us a little bit later on, and we'll wait and see about that. Other uh, news of interest, and I can tell you this, this is uh, news of interest as far as uh, race players are concerned, as far as racing is concerned, really. You know how uh, prominent and how uh, effective and how dangerous uh, trainer Charles uh, Charlie Appleby has been with bringing horses in from Europe into America for the big races and the big racing cards. Just to, you don't have to look any further back than uh, last week with Master of the Seas. In any case, uh, he has decided, Charlie Appleby has decided that uh, he's already run five horses at Keeneland. He's going to set up a, an American uh, stable here. He's going to have about a, a, a dozen horses uh, here in America. Uh, so Charles Appleby now uh, getting some stable area, some stables uh, here in America with his horses there. So that's going to be good news, uh, no doubt about that. And you're going to love this. I, I'm going to go over this with Jonathan and certainly with John Lendo. But as you know, Santa Anita will open the Hollywood meet tomorrow. They have petitioned the California Horse Racing Board to institute a new bet for the players. This new bet is as follows. It's called the three by three. You must pick the top three finishers in three, the three designated races of the three by three bet. They may not be in a row, but it's going to be three races they designate. It's like, uh, you know, the all turf pick three or whatever. They're going, to, they're going to designate three races. In those three races, to accomplish a win, you must have the first, second, and third place finishers in all three races. And you must make place that bet before the first of the three races start. So it's like uh, betting combination bets uh, be, at the beginning of the wager. Simply put, is you got to pick uh, three trifectas in those three races in exact order. The three fi- trifectas must uh, happen. That's called the three by three. They petitioned the California Horse Racing Board. I think it was back in November, as a matter of fact. Wait and see if they get the approval for that new 3 by 3 bet at Santa Anita. When you first think about it, you could say, man, that's kind of like almost an impossible thing. But we all know about the short fields that have been prominent in Southern California for quite a while. Now, if they allow that 3 by 3 bet in a race with five entrants or so, then it becomes an attractive situation because it won't be so difficult to pare down the logical three uh, in each of those three races. And I think that that might have been the premise of their thought about this bet. Now that the fields are much shorter, if we can offer something that is not so um, difficult to hit, uh, maybe the players will play it. We'll wait and see. I think it's kind of interesting, but we'll wait and see on that. All right, on today's show, we got Jonathan Hardoon standing by. We got, of course, Rich Eng uh, coming by, uh, John Lendo as well, and Jerry Jackowitz with racing at Aqueduct and Keeneland. All the handicappers will give us uh, their horses. Yesterday, well, our handicappers are starting to come out of the deep freeze. <clears throat> John Lendo's uh, selection in the eighth and final race at Keeneland got home a winner. Indy Magic uh, won and paid um, $9.98 for the victory there. Rich Ang's horse was scratched in that race, so I didn't have the uh, Sirocco play trifecta. Uh, Rich Ang's horse was scratched in that race. But uh, John Lendo's horse won the last race, paying $9.98. Uh, 
And again, we remind you that with John Lendo's Lendo Report, when he does them at the racetracks he chooses, for today it'll be another Keeneland Lendo Report that'll be here at the South Point free of charge, exclusively here, only here at the South Point uh, for the race players because they love you. Um, John Lendo suggests a late pick four in the last uh, four races on the Lindo report sheet on whatever racetrack he's covering. Well, yesterday he suggested a late pick four on his sheet, the Lindo report yesterday, uh, and it was pared down to just a $12 bet because of some of the horses that he had selected were scratches. So uh, you, you, it was a $12 bet in the suggested late pick four on Lindo's sheet uh, yesterday, and that hit and paid $93.28. So keep that in mind with that Lindo report as well. All right, enough said. Now we're going to go to our first break. Jonathan Hardoon, John Lendo, Rich Eng, and, of course, Jerry J. We're going to get Jerry J's final thoughts about his handicapping uh, philosophies that he ran out of time with yesterday, plus a selection or two from Aqueduct. And, of course, your racing menus next. Don't go away. We'll be right back. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. Okay, back on race day for this almost Friday, Thursday. Looks, the weather is going to be great here in uh, Las Vegas in case you're planning on uh, jumping on a, a plane or maybe jumping in the car and coming on out and enjoy the uh, weekend here in Las Vegas with all we have to offer. Uh, first of all, today it's 66 degrees already outside. We're going to get up to 88 degrees today, and we're going to be pushing into the low 90s by the time the weekend is over. It's going to be sunny and nice, really nice weather here. As far as around the country, not bad. Uh, Miami's 82. New York is 49, and it's raining there, okay? There's a little pocket of uh, rain and et cetera that's going across the New York area on its way out and east over the ocean. But right now, it's raining, and uh, my understanding from Jonathan uh, said it's been raining all night there at Aqueduct. So we'll wait and see about the racing conditions there. But you have uh, other parts of the country like uh, San Antonio is going to be 91 today, L.A. 76. And, of course, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, 93. And even up there, way up at the, uh, in, the, in the north, Minneapolis will be 52 degrees. So we're start, starting to get into that springtime weather, that's for sure. After all, it's really springtime when you're talking about the Kentucky Derby, only 16 days away. All righty, uh, so let's get started with the racing menu on today. And as I said, there's a front going through uh, New York right now. It's going to make that kind of messy. And the only other really cloud cover we have with a little rain is uh, coming over the uh, state of uh, Iowa, a little bit in uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota. But as far as everything else, pretty well clear across the boards. So here's the menu of racetracks available today in the Racebook Simulcast Center's racetracks around the country. First post times are Pacific. Remember that. So if you're listening in a Pacific time zone, not a problem. That'll be, these will be your first post times. If you're listening anywhere else in any other time zone, adjust to it from the Pacific time zone, or you'll miss any something, maybe a bet that you want to make, and we don't want you to miss anything like I miss mom and dad, okay? Here's the menu. First post times are Pacific. We begin with Keeneland Racecourse. Keeneland Racecourse has nine races today. Good competitive card, too. First post time at Keeneland today for their nine race card is set at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. first post at Keeneland today. Gulfstream Park. Remember, now they do have a pick six jackpot, the rainbow jackpot carryover. That's $158,963. But the late pick five carryover with a 50 cent base bet, the late pick five carryover, not a jackpot. It's a regular late pick five. That has $121,788 sitting in the pot. It's a carryover. $121,788 in the pick 
five, late pick five carryover today at Gulfstream. <clears throat> First post time is 10 10, 10, 10, 10 at Gulfstream today. Aqueduct, the big A in New York. Well, I can tell you that their website tells us it's cloudy, 47 degrees, and the track is labeled good. But Jonathan Hardoon is right there, and he's telling me it's raining there at Aqueduct right now. Anyhow, maybe they think it's going to be cloudy and 47 by the time post time comes around. First post at Aqueduct for their eight races today is set at 1020 this morning. 1020 at Aqueduct today. Turf Paradise, Phoenix, Arizona. They've got nine races today at Turf Paradise. Uh, two quarter horse races will open up the card and then the seven thoroughbred races. Uh, that, uh, that consists of the nine races. First post time is 125 at uh, Turf Paradise. Turf Paradise still has the highest carryover in the pick six jackpot in the nation. It stands today at $443,795. $443,795 in the pick six jackpot. And just like any other jackpot, you take it down if you're the only winner in the pick six. First post time, 125 at Turf Paradise today. Evangeline Downs has eight races, full fields all, and uh, first post time is 3.30 at Evangeline Downs. Charlestown races. Charlestown has a pick six jackpot carryover, $27,823. Eight races today at Charlestown and a first post time of 4 p.m. And that is your brief racing menu for today on your almost Friday Thursday. All right. Let's uh, bring in uh, Jonathan Ardoon right now. I'm sure Jonathan has a thought or two about some of the uh, information we've already laid out on you. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Uh, Charles Appleby will be shipping a string up to Saratoga, which will arrive the first week of May, and Ooh. he's going to spend the May through the fall, I guess, till Saratoga closes at the end of the meet. You know, their summer meet, they, mm. they usually leave horses here for another month or two, and uh, he'll be staying that whole time. So Appleby will have 12 to 15 horses stabled at Saratoga. All right. Uh, it looks as though the feed that we're getting from you, it looks like you got a little bit of a uh, strobe light going on in there. But that, nevertheless, we're doing fine. <laughs> Don't touch anything because we know that if you touch something, but a bing, you know? So in any case... <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's nice to see Charles. Well, gosh, why not? I mean, the guy's had such success. Every time he comes over, he just slams the American horses, especially in the turf races. I mean, uh, why not to have some of the Europeans come over here and take some good old USA uh, cash out, right? Yeah, and he should send a string to California as well because, <laughs> you know, he'll never have to worry about races coming off the grass there, not during this time of year. So, uh you know, he's got enough horses. Why not spread it out? Well, now, Jonathan, of course, uh, he's got to deal with, uh, you know, Phil D'Amato, who is the king of uh, turf racing right now over there in, in Southern California. But you talk about turf racing. Now, uh, you know, th today is the 18th of April, and in two days is the day demarked for the opening of the turf course at Aqueduct, yet it's, uh, you say it's raining. It's been raining all night there. Well, it rained all night, and it's still raining some this morning. It's on and off showers. You know, it's hit and miss, but uh, there, there will be more rain today. But again, uh, first racing scheduled for Saturday, and that's great news because that will certainly increase um, inventory. It'll increase uh, field size, and we'll get more races. So that's really, we love turf racing, and uh, especially here. Now, I do believe Aqueduct has two turf courses, right? Correct. They have uh, two turf courses. They got rid of the um, winter track, and they made their main track full-time winterized, and they added a turf course when they did away with the inner track. So they have two turf courses and one dirt track. Okay, and of course, uh, we all know Saratoga's got three of them. One of them uh, used uh, mostly for steeplechase racing, right? Two turf, no. Two turf two courses turf. and a main track. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought uh, they had three. But nevertheless, they have three tracks. It's just two of them are only turf and, and the other. Correct. Are, By the way, that... Ralph, back to that uh, trifecta three races <laughs> in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Is Tell me about it. Is that a, uh, is that a jackpot? Is that the, Are they going to pay it every day? Are they going to carry it? That's not going to be hit so easily, even if they have six horse fields. Try to put nine horses in a row together where they're going to finish because that's what you have to do. 
That is absolutely correct. And to answer that question and the other question that I know uh, arises, what is the uh, bet uh, amount going to be? Uh, I I do not know is either. Is it a dollar bet? Is it a fifty right. cent bet? Right. You know. I I do not know that either. I know that all I know is they petitioned the California Horse Racing Board. Uh, to do it. I'm sure that maybe John Lindo has uh, the answer to those two questions a bit, a little bit later on. But I think now, of course, the old rule is you have to have what, six horses in the race to have a trifecta offer? Five horses. Five now horses? Five. All right, five yeah. horses to all offer a trifecta. And I would think that with the short fields in there, maybe this was the kind of bet that they devised because it all of a sudden doesn't become so hard, especially if you got like a four to five shot in one of those races or Bob Baffert's got, you know. Fine, two but out. you still have to hit three tries in a row. I and know. It's on, one t- it's on one ticket. So you're technically picking nine horses to finish in, you know, nine in a row. <laughs> nine, and you have to pick there where they're going to finish nine in a row. Good luck. Uh, not yeah, so yeah you, you're now you're blurring out. I don't know what's going on with your camera there, but uh, if you can try to move it, there you go. Okay. You're fine now. Don't move any. Don't, don't, e- don't even. Don't even breathe, Don't okay? Even uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> in any case, in any case, well, such is technology. Uh, in any case, yeah, you have to pick the three winners. You have to pick the three horses that are going to run, run second. You have to pick the three horses that ran third. But let's say you um, you have two races that you really know you, you, you're going to concentrate on the winner, and then you got maybe uh, two horses apiece that – you think he'll finish second and third. So it's going to be like uh, one. You have to do it three different times. I know. And it's all on one bet. You're yeah. not boxing. You're not getting to make three boxes. Well, three you can. You boxes. can You can box. You yeah, get... then you're going to make multiple tickets. Good luck. Exactly. You're going to spend 17 hours making those No, tickets. no, no, no. You can, no. You can box uh, three horses or four horses in each of the races, but of course the multiples go up, but you can do that. That's fine because okay. on that ticket, somewhere on those tickets, there'll be the exact order finish one, two, three. It's just like, well, that's pick- where you're going to have to play it. You're going to have to make the boxes. You're not picking nine straight and you know how they're going to finish yeah. that. That's just not happening. Yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Anyhow, uh, let's get started with taking maybe a look at the uh, Oaklawn Handicap. It's a, you know, uh, Oaklawn Park has had, what, uh, three races now at 1250000 and one at a 1500000 That was the Arkansas Derby. But, uh, you know, taking a look at uh, the Oaklawn Handicap field coming up on Saturday for a 1250000 Mile and one eighth. These are the four-year-olds and up. This is the uh, division that uh, goes for the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, from the rail out, you have Highland Falls, uh, Garo for uh, Brad Cox. Cox. So you, your guy, your guy got a horse in that race, drew the rail. Number two is Double Crown, Colby Hernandez for Raymond uh, Ginter Jr. The three is Magic Tap, a tap at Offspring, Keith Asmussen for his father Steve. Then you have Octane, the four horse, Julian Le Peru for Juan Alvarado. The five is Red Route One, Joel Rosario for Steve Asmussen. So he has at least two in the race. And then you have Bob Baffert sending off out a horse, and you know how uh, proficient Baffert is at Oaklawn Park. He's sending out Reincarnate, and again, Juan Hernandez going out for that. They've already annexed the uh, Arkansas uh, Derby and the Apple Blossom, so that team gets together again. They're number six. The seven is Guntown, Ramon Vasquez for Mike Maker. The eight is Last Samurai, uh, Richard uh, Iramia for uh, Eddie Milligan Jr., the nine is Country Final, uh, Edwin Gonzalez for Safi Joseph Jr. The 10 is Skippy Longstocking, Jose Ortiz riding for Safi Joseph. And of course, the 11 is Instant Coffee, uh, Christian Torres riding for Jose D'Angelo. And uh, it looks like a, a, a competitive field. And certainly right now in the handicap division, there's no really big outstanding horses course that you have to there are no standouts there are no uh flight lines or anything like that 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 we have to worry about it's a wide open race uh cox draws the rail with highland falls he certainly is on the improve the last time out didn't run well when coming off of lasix but he shipped to santa anita that day octane is on the improve getting better with each start skippy long stockings never runs a bad one mm-hmm. and then uh, the horse that i'm connected with instant coffee's got a tough outside post but he's training very well and seems to like the track all right and well we'll get a a, a, a pick from you on that on uh, saturday when they run that race but for today we need to get some selection so what are we doing 
Okay, let's go to Aqueduct first, and uh, we're going to look at the um, fourth race, a uh, fifth race today. I'm sorry, and I like the number two horse in here, Whistler's Style. Uh, this is a six-year-old mare was claimed last time out by trainer Orlando Noda. This horse loves moisture in the racetrack, can handle the distance. Uh, this horse will be on or near the lead, seven and two on the morning line. I like number two, Whistler's style to win today's fifth race out at Aqueduct. And uh, no matter what the track condition, right? No, if it rains, it's fine. You could bet more if it rains. The horse certainly likes moisture and uh, no, n makes no difference. Okay, fifth race, which is the anchor in the early pick five and early pick four. The In the fifth race, you like the two, Whistler style. We hope he gets to whistle home a winner. In the fifth race, the two, Whistler style. All right, now we're next. We're going to Gulfstream and look at race seven. That's part of that uh, pick five carryover. Aha. Uh -huh. I love the number two horse in here, Split Strike. This is a three-year-old from the Christopher Clement barn. As a two-year-old, this horse ran faster than these horses run now at the age of three. He gets Lasix for the first time. He's been gelded since his last race. A rider switch to Paco Lopez, five to one on the morning line. Number two, Split Strike wins today's seventh race out at Gulfstream Park. All right, seventh race at Gulfstream, number two, split strike, the two in the seventh race at Gulfstream. Remember the pick five with that carryover of 121,000 plus, 50 cent base bet, not a jackpot, so it's a pick five, regular pick five, starts in the fourth race today at Gulfstream, and Jonathan comes with the seventh race, number two, split strike amongst uh, the uh, pick five there. Does there look like, is, is there any race there that you have seen that you could sit there and say, yeah, this course can be a singleton in your sequence or not? Yeah, split strike. <laughs> okay, you got it. You're going to take split. Nice five to one on the morning line, too. All right. So I'm not giving out a horse that I don't love. Right? No, no, I understand that. But I'm talking about if, you, if there was like a gimme uh, horse, for example. By the way, in that race, folks, he's giving you the horse that he believes is a singleton. In that race, there's a six to five shot that he's going against there. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Jonathan, for that. In the seventh race, the two split strike. All right, now you've thank, got... Thank me after the race, Ralph. Don't thank me before. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, I want your best, and that's for sure. And um, so you got um, sheets for Aqueduct, uh, Gulfstream, yep. and Keeneland today, right? Correct. And uh, that is at your website. That's all that's running. J-O-N-H-A-R-D-O-O-N.com. Well, all right, Jonathan. Thanks so much for all of your input and all the, uh, you know, all of the uh, psychedelic uh, pictures that you gave us this morning and all that good stuff. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll have a fix by tomorrow. Uh, don't Thank worry. you, Ralph. Stay uh, safe and be well. All right. Uh, just a little entertaining with technology there. That's for sure. Hey, coming up next, Rich Ang. He's got a pick for us at Keeneland. And maybe a thought about uh, the NBA playoffs. We'll wait and see. Anyhow, we'll be right back. Who is there for heroes? Are the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people People in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year, dozens of golf outings, and the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service, bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. 
This weekend, the top California juveniles will be in action. It's the trials to the grade two Robert A. Dare Kindergarten Futurity this Sunday night. Great racing action is in store with the juveniles with the 10 fastest times advancing to the kindergarten final on May 12th. Plus, night racing's best bets like our early and late pick fours and our $10,000 pick six promo. We'll add 10,000 to the pick six pool on Sunday if there's not a carryover. Last Sunday's pick six paid over $34,000. And horse players, Los Alamitos is the perfect place to enjoy all of the national simulcast racing action. From Santa Anita and Oaklawn to Gulfstream Park and the top New York tracks. And remember to reserve a table in the beautiful Vessels Club for Kentucky Derby Day. For reservations, call 714-820-2681. We're all about the horse players. The kindergarten trials this Sunday night. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. Vegas for this almost Friday Thursday and uh, we're going to go out now to uh, Rich Ang standing by and uh, Richie good morning hey good morning Rafi and good morning listeners uh Richie of course I know the daily racing forum is going to be real busy during uh, Kentucky Derby week but there are uh, no um special delivery times or anything for uh, the uh the usual deliveries etc for the uh, for the Kentucky Derby week of the racing forums right they'll all be the same yeah, they'll all be the same, and I'm actually glad you 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 made mention of it because uh, uh, something that uh, uh, I've been working on with the uh, folks back in New York is uh, for the first time in many many years there's going to be a Kentucky Derby Advance Edition, and it has to do with the fact that the Derby is going to be drawn at least about a week out, Ralph. Yeah, and so uh, I'll have more details about it, but it looks like we'll be able to produce a Advance similar to the Breeders' Cup Advance that comes out you know, a bit before the Breeders' Cup. But uh, I'll have more details as far as the exact di- uh, day that it'll be available on the race books. But it'll have, you know, the PPs of yeah. all the 20 horses, the also eligibles, and, of course, editorial that supports all of it. Well, that's great uh, news to hear, for not only for us racing fans who are going to, you know, get our Ouija boards and everything else, marking pens out to start handicapping uh, two big races, big racing days. Of course, the Kentucky Derby, the big racing day. And it also helps our, our production staff out uh, for doing all the graphics that we need for the uh, special show on that Thursday as well. So uh, it's glad to hear in this studio, that's for sure. All right, Richie, anything uh, about uh, the NBA playoffs that uh, piques your interest? Yeah, just a few points. One was uh, if, if people had the chance to watch the Golden State Warriors game against Sacramento, where Sacramento just blew them out by about 30 points. It was kind of sad in the fact that uh, it, I think it showed the end of an era for the Golden State Warriors. They looked really old. They look really slow. And, uh, you know, it happens when uh, you've got your stars that they've won five championships, Ralph. And when you think about it, when you win a championship uh, in the NBA, you have to play probably, you know, between 100 and 110 games over the course of the year. And that takes a toll on the bodies of these players. So between Seth Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, it, it really looks like they're coming to an end. So that, that team's going to have to rebuild. And uh, two injuries uh, in play-in games that are going to occur this week. Jimmy Butler got hurt uh, last night, hurt his right knee. He's not playing. So uh, now the Heat are going to be an underdog at home against the Chicago Bulls. And uh, for the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, Zion Williamson injured a hamstring. So he's not going to play in their play-in game. So uh uh, you got to keep an eye on those injuries. When you lose your stars, you're in big trouble. Oh, no question about that. That's for sure. And thanks a lot for passing that along to our sports players out there. Uh, well, yeah, I know you have a Keeneland sheet today. Tomorrow you have a double whammy. You'll have a sheet for a handicapping sheet for opening day of the Hollywood meet at uh, Santa Anita and the continuation of the Keeneland meet. Uh, but for today, you have a selection sheet for today at Keeneland. It is available right now at the racedaylasvegas.com websites. And so, um, he had a scratch yesterday, so no harm, no foul. What about today? Let's go to race number eight at Keeneland. Six and a half furlongs, claiming 40, Ralph. And uh, there's a lot of speed in this race, a lot of early speed. Horses who like to run near the lead. I'm going to go with a horse that I think can get the right trip sitting from off the pace and rally late. That's number four, 
unraptured picks up by Ryan Ortiz Jr. Uh, Bill Morey, the trainer. Uh, this horse actually has only had three dirt races, but has pretty good speed figures in those three races. So let's go for the four, unraptured in race number eight to uh, come from behind. All right, the eighth race today at Keeneland, you like number four, unraptured, the four in the eighth race with Irad aboard uh, at uh, nine to two on the morning line. Eighth race, the four horse at Keeneland is uh, Richie's uh, play for us on the uh, on the race day show. And, of course, you can get the rest of Richie's uh, selections right now at racedaylasvegas.com. Okay, hey, thanks a lot, Rich. And, uh, again, keep us posted as soon as you know when that advanced edition will be on the newsstands and in the race books for the race players, you let us know, okay? Yeah, I, I will do Ralph, and it should be a really a chance for everybody to jump in on it early in the week to, to handicap the Kentucky. No Bowl. question about that. Thanks a lot, my man, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thanks, y'all. Good luck, everybody. All right, coming up next, John uh, Lindo, and, of course, then we're going to get Jerry Jackowitz. We're going to give Jerry enough time to complete his thoughts about his handicapping that he started yesterday but ran out of time. And, of course, we're going to hit him for a couple of horses at Aqueduct today as well. So don't go away. We'll be right back to wrap up this almost Friday, Thursday race day show from the South Point Studios here in Las Vegas, Nevada. From the South Point Studios. The perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. It's the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look at the clock? I... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The Race Day Las Vegas Show, the only exclusive daily local media racing information source in Las Vegas. All righty, back on Race Day Las Vegas. We now go out to John Lendo standing by. I want to remind everybody, uh, though, before that, that uh, we have a couple of more great shows coming up here at the South Point Studios feed today, and that is uh, the Sports by the Book. will start at 9 a.m. this morning, and Gone Racing on uh, racing as far as under the hood, so to speak. Uh, that will start at 10 a.m., and then you'll have, of course, uh, punch lines from noon to 1. So plenty of action left on the South Point Studios streaming network here at YouTube. All right, now, John Lindo. John, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. And your uh, late pick uh, for yesterday, Keeneland, $93.28, but it was only a $12 layout, and you can only take what they're going to give you. But uh, the suggested late pick four hit again yesterday on the Lindo Report, capped off by your winner on this show, uh, the last race winner that paid almost $10, $9.98. Yeah, we got all the breakage. Just, I, I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, right down to the penny, pal. That's in Kentucky. All right, a quick thought about this new uh, bet that they're trying to institute at Santa Anita, the uh, three-by-three. You got to hit three trifectas in a row. What say you? I know very little about it. You know, the first I heard about it was from you, Ralph. And uh, to be honest with you, just my first impressions, uh, it's, you know, not every wager is made for every horse player. Uh, this is something that I probably won't get involved in. To me, it's a wager set up for somebody with a big bank role. It's more designed to the computer-assisted wager players than I think the everyday guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll wait for more details to see, what again, what's the takeout, what's the uh, minimum bet, uh, how is this going to work. And uh, I don't know what you can expect on, on a pool size because it's going to take some – to hit three tries in a row, it's going to take some coverage. So it's got to pay off pretty darn good if you're going to take the shot at it. So – I'm on the fence. My first reaction is I'll let somebody else play it. 
And remember, this is proposed. It hasn't been approved yet by the racing board. They're still working on approving it. But this has, uh, this has been proposed by Santa Anita. We will wait and see what happens. They proposed it for this Hollywood meet, but uh, since there has been no release on it yet, I'm not quite sure if they're going to be kicking it off by tomorrow. That's for sure. Anyhow, uh, we got uh, they're starting uh, racing tomorrow at San Anita. I understand that the uh, card looks good and uh, for the weekend as well. Yeah, in fact, there are six turf races on uh, Saturday out of the uh, ten. You know, yeah. the one thing with all the rain and the the cancellations we had, that turf course for the second half of this uh, long meet is in, is in good shape. So they're planning on using it quite a bit, and we need it because, to be honest with you, yeah. the dirt si- field sizes have been soft all meet long. And uh, you get better field sizes, better wagering opportunities right now in Southern California when you race on the turf. Not even a question about that. We're happy to see that they're going to uh, utilize uh, what seems to be a very uh, well-maintained uh, turf course at this time. Anyhow, uh, you have the Linda report for Keeneland running, uh, of course, during the Keeneland meet. And you'll be doing double duty tomorrow at Santa Anita and Keeneland. But for today, the Keeneland Linda report is available right now in the race book here at the South Point free of charge exclusively here. It's the only place you can get it uh, here at the South Point because they uh, love horse players here, no doubt about that. Again, you have selections in all the races. Again, you'll have a suggested late pick four and all the goody information at the bottom. And so for the weekend, you'll be doing double duty Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, both Santa Anita and Keeneland, right? Right. Uh, we'll go through uh, Keeneland every day uh, through their closing day next Friday. And then uh, they get started with that Churchill Downs meet next Saturday. And I love the fact that uh, they'll enter the Derby one week out. It gives us an all, a lot of time to prepare for our seminar and, and do the homework and be ready to go. Yeah, and be ready to gamble on it as well. That's for sure. All right, uh, John, we got a winner from you yesterday. Let's parlay it to another winner today. Let's go to Keeneland, race number seven today. In the seventh race, number three, LJ's Emma comes off a, a trip uh, during the fall meet at Keeneland where she just got stopped in traffic, had nowhere to go, ended up uh, running in the middle of the pack. You throw that race out. Uh, this, this is a horse that's very tactical. She ought to be in the middle of the pack early, but there isn't a ton of speed, so I don't think she'll be too far back. She likes this course. If she can work out a trip uh, for a barn that is very, very good off the off the layoff, Eddie Canelli, very good with fresh horses here. Nine to two in the program. Number three, LJ Emma, I think is well met. Race number seven at Keeneland. And in the seventh race, you like the three LJ's Emma, Luis Saez aboard. He had a three bagger yesterday along with uh, Jose Ortiz. Those two uh, won six of the eight races yesterday at Keeneland. And today, Louis is uh, back aboard your horse, the three LJ's Emma, the three in the seventh race, John Lindo's pick for the race day listeners. And of course, that is part of the uh, late pick four suggested on his sheet as well. Thanks a lot, John. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, Ralph. Good luck today. All right. You got it, my man. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jack with Stan and Vine. Jerry was just about ready to complete his thoughts about uh, handicapping strategies on the show when we just ran out of time. So without any further ado, we'll we'll have him continue that and then uh, give us a couple of picks at Aqueduct at the end of the show. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Yeah, so uh, when when, – the end of the show came, we were talking about horses on the power page that were rated very, you know, down the, the ladder, lower rated, who were getting a lot of money. And uh, for me, this is one of the best things about the power page um, because it it's a really good indicator of inside money without having to chart, to without having to go and chart exact is and exact the prices and how they're changing and so forth, which are more difficult today to do than they were in the old days. But the, um, you know, to, to assume that um, a horse gets is getting a lot of money and is poorly rated is that I did a bad handicapping job is just, you know, it's, it's egotistical on the part of the person doing that. The assumption should be is that I know how to make ratings. I've been doing it for 30 years, pretty successfully. I have lots of people who rely on them. And they understand that when a horse doesn't have the form that they're supposed to have to get a better rating, but they're getting the money, there may be a workout or a change in ownership or something that's happened. And that the new people taking over might be big betters. You know, maybe maybe I'm rating a horse that's a Michael Dubb horse, for example, who's... um, notoriously overbets his horses, although he's very successful. Um, 
but I'm giving you the rating that the horse has earned on the track, and Michael's giving you the rating that he feels that the trainers got him to. So it's really great information, not not um, not not false information, and it's not bad handicapping at all. It's just the opposite. It's really excellent handicapping, but it requires you to know more about the game, and requires you to kind of understand the kinds of things that each of you have to to encounter and deal with when making a bet. So if I see, for example, I like a horse, I have a star horse, he's top rated, he's maybe three to one, five to two, and I'm interested in betting him. And then I see some horse from, you know, a stable that I think has got a lot of betting actions, all of a sudden bet way down that I don't have a good rating on. I might just kill the bet. I might just say, well, you know, this race, the lay of the land isn't, isn't it's not really, it's not really moving towards me. There's some unknown information here that I can't, I can't quantify. You know, other people might want to bet the hot horse. I don't like to do that because I don't like to bet underlays, but good underlays, you know, do pay money. So I suppose it's okay if you're very, very good at it. But, uh, but for me, I would kill the bet or maybe take that, uh, that short priced horse and include it in my exactness and maybe even promote it money wise. Mm -hmm. So off, if I you know if I like the overlay, if the horse is seven, eight, ten to one, I'm not going to not bet the horse. But then I'll just bring that hot horse, we'll call it, or that overbet uh, right, right horse. I'll bring that into the play in such a way that it's if it beats me, it's not going to hurt me. All right. So then, what I'm um, getting from your conversation or your pitch here is that if uh, you have a horse that's rated uh, high on your uh, ratings. And uh, uh, another horse uh, may be either, either getting bet or not. That, that's when you come into play and, and evaluate uh, the, where the money is coming from, so to speak. You got to know the, the owners, I guess, and the trainers who like the bet, like, for example, the Ropo right. Ropoli horses or something. Or if both, sure. oh, if both of them converge together on one horse, then it's really a go for you, right? Well, you know, not, not necessarily. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm more interested. I'm more interested in getting people to understand this. There's horses that are rated at the top of the rating scale. They go down to the 12th horse. That's the reason I do 12 horses in the race is because there's inside money in the game, and insider money you should be using to form to understand what you're betting on, whether you should make the bet or not. Uh -huh. And when some of these bottom-rated horses are getting lots of money, you have to. There's a caution sign being put up that should make you alter your opinion. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. We got a minute and a half to do two uh, picks. Go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's start with the, my feature play was the ninth race today. Obrigado. The six horse pops off the page at ten to one to me. I think yeah. it should be about nine to two. Wow. For Linda Roy. Roy I'm going to make a good win bet here on the six horse. That's going to be the start of the bet. I'm going to have some small exactities with the six, with the seven, nine, and reverse seven, nine over the six. But I'm mostly interested in the win place bet here on number six, Obrigada. All right. In the eighth and final race, you like the six, Obrigada. A nice, juicy 10 to one on the morning line if we can get it. The sixth, and the only two link ups you're going to do are the seven and nine in exactas, et cetera. The six over seven, nine, and a little reverse seven, nine over the six, correct? Right, correct. This, yeah, the the main function of my money will be in winning place. Let's go to the seventh for my uh, my backup play. Mooley from David Duggan looks pretty interesting from the outside with Carmusha. I like the seven quite a bit. Really good form cycle. Um, had a tough trip last time out. Let's play the seven over the three, four, five. Reverse three, four, five over the seven. Maybe bet a little extra. Seven, five, five, seven. Seventh race. The seven is the key. Link-ups are three, four, five, and reverse. $2 ROI on the seven. And so uh, Jerry's given, given us a Sirocco late double there at uh, Aqueduct, not even knowing it. So we're going to play the late double in the seventh race. We're going to say uh, late double, seven, six. And that'll cover the seven in the seventh race and the six in the eighth and final race for a little late double action. Don't forget power pages are available right now at jerryjspowerpage.com. And don't forget, folks, there is a carryover in the late pick five. It is not a jackpot, a regular late pick five at Gulfstream, exceeding $121,000. So we'll wrap up this almost Friday, uh, Thursday show by telling you the next time we'll talk to you is it will actually be Friday. God willing, and the crick don't rise. In the meantime, one last thing to say, and Jerry is going to say it. Hey!
have a great race day, everybody.